When it comes to pork, most home cooks know the chop, the tenderloin, the loin roast, even the Boston butt. But because I am a sucker for the underdog and the oddball, I have a new favorite cut of pork, the country style rib. Why oddball? First, it suffers from something of an identity crisis, since despite its name, it's not really a rib. Second, it has an indeterminate composition, consisting of both light and dark meat. Finally, it has a tendency to slide into disreputable territory, since its name is sometimes appropriated for less desirable cuts. But like any good antihero, the country style rib has hidden virtues. It has rich, deep pork flavor, it is generally the most inexpensive cut of pork at the meat counter and it is ideal for those slow-cooked dishes we crave in cool weather. To understand this cut, you first need to know the blade pork chop. This chop is cut from the two ribs at the shoulder end of the pork loin. Because it comes from the intersection of the tender loin and the more fat-laden and gnarly shoulder, it has qualities of both. Butchers used to have difficulty selling this chop because it didn't look as lean and smooth as those from the center of the loin. So it generally ended up as an ingredient in sausages or, less reputably, secreted at the bottom of a wrapped package of loin chops. Then sometime back in the late 1960s or early 70s, a Chicago-area butcher, Cliff Bowes, came up with the idea of taking advantage of the popularity of ribs by fashioning these lowly chops into strips that resembled ribs. To do so, he butterflied the chops and cut through the ribs. You can recognize these traditional country-style ribs by the slender section of rib that curves prettily along the bottom. I asked butchers in New York and Boston to cut me country-style ribs and both did it this way. In a world in which everyone used the same words to mean the same thing, that would be the end of the story. But the approach of butchers tends to be more like that of Humpty Dumpty, who said in Through the Looking Glass, when I use a word, it means just what I choose it to mean. So it's not surprising that three other cuts are often marketed under this name. Sometimes instead of a curving rib bone, you'll find a flat little two or three inch section of bone lurking along one edge of your country style ribs. This means the chop was cut from the section of the shoulder just adjacent to the ribs, the bone is a piece of the scapula. But this is really not a big deal. Ribs fabricated in this fashion will have somewhat more fat and connective tissue and more dark meat, but are still close cousins of the more traditional cut and cook up the same way. That's not the end of it, though. Some butchers will cut the lower part of the pork shoulder into strips and label them boneless country-style ribs. They are still tasty and work well in long cooking recipes, but you have to pay closer attention to what you're getting and avoid those with excess amounts of fat and gnarl. Then there's the higher class imposter. Sometimes boneless ribeye chops are fashioned into long, slender pieces and called country-style ribs. You can tell them clearly from their much lighter color and higher price usually twice as expensive as the real thing. But since this portion of the pig is much leaner and therefore cooks differently, we'll bypass these ersatz ribs for now. Any of the other versions, though, will work just fine particularly in stews and braises. In addition to its proportion of lean meat to fat and collagen, the country-style rib also has a shape that makes it ideal for stews. It's hard to find pre-cut pork stew meat in the supermarket, and even if you do it's not a good idea to buy it, since it usually consists of ragged little odds and ends from around the pig. So the usual drill is to buy a Boston butt and butcher it which is a considerable amount of work. Country-style ribs, on the other hand, have considerably less fat and gnarl than the butt and come in neat pieces that are easily sliced up. In a similar way, 
country style ribs brown quickly and fit neatly into a Dutch oven for long, slow braising. I don't often go for pre salting meat, because I rarely think far enough ahead to do it. But these ribs do benefit from the process, which somehow evens out the cooking times of the darker and lighter sections, so I recommend it. If you forget it, though, forge ahead. The results will still be delicious. Recipes Braised country style pork ribs with chipotle pork stew with pears and sweet potatoes. Follow NYT Food on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Get regular updates from NYT Cooking, with recipe suggestions, cooking tips, and shopping advice.